It's 2021. It's that time, Cooper. You know what time it is? GS Mini Time. GS Mini Time. We are going to do a new review of all of the GS Minis and compare them for you great people out there. So stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, visit our Teespring store linked below for our custom designed t-shirts. So, as we mentioned, it is time to go over some Mini Coopers. Now, we've done this, this is actually the third video we've done on this channel, but it's necessary because the line kind of keeps changing and evolving. So, I remember the first time, check this out, this is how long we've been doing this. The first time we did a video comparing all of the GS Minis, the GS Mini Koa had just come out. Wow. And if I recall, it was a limited edition. And we shot down in the basement, and, uh, and Patrick was behind the camera, so if it's out of focus, that's why. Um, and it was a really beautiful GS Mini Koa, probably the prettiest one we've gotten. And our boss, Zach, bought that. And I was always really, really glad that he bought the one everyone would want. Yeah. Such a, such a move. Anyways. Such a trend for our, our staff here. <laughs> cool guitar. Really good. Something everybody wants. Yeah. Buy it. One of us yeah. taking that one home. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's time for 2021 to look at these guitars again. If you don't know, you've been living under a rock, the GS Mini is probably one of the most popular single guitar models and definitely series of guitars that's available in the world. Taylor sells more GS Minis than some guitar companies sell guitars. That's how popular they are. And, you know, it's been about, I guess, 10 years or maybe a little bit over 10 years since they first came out with the GS Mini, but it's a win winning <coughs> formula. You own yeah, one. I do. I have two. You have two? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. I've got one. Yeah. My son has one. How'd you end up with two? Guitar Wars. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You won one. I won one before I worked here, so there was no cheating involved. That's right. I entered in Guitar Wars. He did use a looper, which some people didn't like, but uh, yeah, it you know cheap. who you are. <laughs> um, no, but uh, I did win a GS Mini for Guitar Wars, and it is beautiful. I love it. It's Sapele one from back in the day. Is it a mahogany top one? No, it's spruce top. Spruce Sapele top. Okay. Back. Yeah, and then um, when I started here, I got myself the walnut. Yeah. Um, so now the first one I got from Guitar Wars belongs to my mom. She got that one, and I play my walnut one all the time. But, nice. Yeah. Nice. So there's there's four basic models, and there's some options on some of these. But the the pricing on the GS Minis now range from about five hundred bucks all the way up to just under a thousand dollars. And within that, there's a number of wood options and pricing. So the thing today is to kind of tell you what the options are available for 2021. And then, of course, go through them and play them so you can hear the differences for yourself. Now, starting off, we're going to start with this guy right here. And this is the Mahogany. And this is actually, I don't know if you know this, probably one of our most popular ones that we sell that people love. Mm -hmm. And something that wasn't always in stock, it's kind of kind of it's kind of been discontinued and come back based upon yeah. supply. And each time it does, we get irate people going, when are the GS Mini Mahoganys coming back? But it is a GS Mini. This particular one does not have a pickup system in it at all. Um, and actually, neither does this one that I'm holding. So either of these are available kind of at the lower price point for the series. Um, and the construction of these is, is all going to be the same. The GS Mini, if you aren't aware, then as the name implies, it's a Grand Symphony body shape that's been left in the dryer too long and shrunk, you know, like Cooper's sweaters. Um, and if you want to see what that looks like, if I wore one of Cooper's sweaters, it looked like it got shrunk in the dryer. Um, <laughs> but these are basically shrunken down Grand Symphony models. So a little bit bigger, lower bout than um, the Grand Auditoriums that Taylor's typically known for. And they've got some secret weapons going inside. So it's a solid top on all of these. The back and sides are layered. Um, and the bracing is all scalloped X bracing. The sound hole is bigger. Did you know that? I didn't, but it, I guess it makes sense. Um, like how, how much bigger than a typical? I don't know. Yeah. It's, you know, maybe 
Dunkin' Donut versus Krispy Kreme size. That's fair. <laughs> so, but they are a bigger sound hole, which I didn't realize for the longest time until uh, our Taylor rep JR let me in on that little thing because I don't think it's in the specs anywhere. But it does have a larger sound hole, helps to get that sound out of the guitar. And the thing that makes these so popular that always surprises people is that they sound so much bigger than they are. Mm -hmm. Like how does something so big come out of something so little? But they are huge sounding, very resonant guitars. A lot of that goes to the bracing and the solid top and kind of the curved back that you have. And they're just great feeling, great sounding instruments that can be used as a travel guitar or your full size. So you can start here with either the mahogany topped model or the spruce top with rosewood back and sides. Now the differences between these is that this is going to have kind of a mid-range mellow sound to it because of the mahogany top. Um, it's It will compress, it has some nice uh, sustain that comes along with that. And a lot of people buy this because they really love that warmth. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The spruce, on the other hand, is going to have those typical spruce characteristics that most acoustic guitars have. A lot of dynamic range, so if you're playing softer and you get louder, you're going to hear all of that. It's not going to be as compressed as the, the mahogany top version. Um, it will also have a brighter sound and be louder overall because of the spruce's response to it. So either of these models are available with or without electronics and every single GS Mini comes with a gig bag. From there, we move to the two models that are only available with electronics. And somehow you ended up with both of the Koa models. How does that work exactly? Because I placed them, and I know it makes you jealous. Um, yeah, so I have the Koa and the Koa Plus. Now, you can articulate better the difference between these besides just finishing. Obviously, this has got a shaded edge burst, right. and this does not. But So they're both Koa uh, tops, solid Koa tops, layered Koa back and sides. Um, the bracing is the same. I have noticed there's nothing in the specs about this, but... Some of the Koa that comes on the Plus models tends to be flamier, prettier. Um, we get some incredible looking Koa guitars on the, the normal GS Mini Koas, um, but the, the grain can vary pretty wildly. The biggest differences between them happen to be the finish, the pickup, and the case that you get. So on the GS Mini Koa that you have, it has the ESB, I think is what they're calling it now, which is basically an ES2 element. So the ES2 pickups that's in the bridge is the exact same as on every other ES2 equipped guitar. But the preamp is different. You get a volume, a tone, and a built-in tuner, which a lot of people like. Mm -hmm. um, whereas on the GS Mini Koa Plus, you get this wonderful edge burst treatment. You get a full ES2 pickup system with the controls on the top. And instead of getting this gig bag that all of the GS Minis come with, you get upgraded to their new GS Mini sized arrow case, which is kind of a cross between a gig bag and a case and, and very, very cool. And so it is an upcharge and those are definitely the benefits that you get to it. Now, I'll say this to you. The, the difference between, the, the pickup itself is the same. The preamp is different. And to me, the biggest benefit there's two benefits that you get with the normal ES2. You don't get a tuner. And a lot of people are like, that's not a benefit. To me, that's a benefit. I yeah. don't want a tuner on a guitar. I've never seen one last like a decade. Yeah. Um, and I just I just don't like that on, on my acoustic guitar. Your mileage may vary, you might prefer differently, but I don't want it. But the bigger thing is the tone control. So on the ES2, you have three knobs, volume, treble, and bass. And now you can think of these as, as active with the mid set. If you want a boosted mid-range, you turn both bass and treble down, you have boosted mid-range. If you want a scooped mid-range like a rosewood guitar would have, you turn both up, you have a scooped mid-range, mm -hmm. but you have controls over either of those functions and you can turn bass down and treble up and vice versa. On the ESB, you only have a tone knob, yep. that's it. So you're sweeping through frequencies based upon that and that's really all you have access to. So that, and the, the arrow case are the huge kind of improvements that you get on the GS Mini Koa Plus, spec-wise anyway. Yeah. Uh, the finish is certainly, I think, prettier. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, the wood that they tend to use for this tends to be uh, nicer, uh, yeah. which I think makes sense since it's a few hundred dollars yeah. more expensive. But all in all, I mean, the main recipe for these hasn't really changed. Which is good. Yeah, so you owned 
the regular spruce. Yeah. You have the spruce in the walnut right now. I've yeah. got a Koa one. Mm-hmm. They're and they're all amazing. They, uh, I mean, we've talked about it plenty of times, but once you get one of these, it becomes easily your most played guitar. I think um, having it by the couch, having it, you know, hanging up in your room, wherever you're going to write more songs on this thing, practice more on this thing. And it's great because it sounds awesome. I've played shows with yeah. my Walnut before. And uh, like me personally, I have a Passport PA mm-hmm. um, and a little bag with cords and stuff so I can put GS Mini on my back with my little PA and bag. And that's everything you need, you know. I'm reminded, hand me the co one. I just thought of something else that we. I want to make sure we point out because I think these are all very gateable <coughs> guitars. Mm-hmm. But one thing that I think is a benefit of having the ES2 on that is the battery as well. So on these, you have a little compartment right here. You pinch that and it pops out and it's two, if I can get it to pop out. It's two CR2032 batteries. So it's basically like the small watch batteries that are stacked to power that preamp. On yours- That's what I was checking out earlier. Yeah, yeah. you have a full uh, nine volt battery compartment that pops out just like the full size tailors do. So if you are gigging, like you said, yeah. you've used, I, I tend to find that to be a better system for Definitely. that and a battery that's just gonna handle more gigs for a longer period of time. Yeah, so. for sure. No, uh, and I mean, even more to that point, being able to tweak your EQ a yeah. little bit more, that's pretty awesome. I actually had somebody um, the other day come in and ask why this one had the ES2 versus that one. Was that always the case, or did some of them, because I'm pretty sure mine might have. It's a good question. Yeah. No, it wasn't always the case, um, so. For for a while, they had the EST, which was a precursor to the EST. Some of them, like my GS Mini Koa, had the full EST. Yeah. Um, and then they changed it. There 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 was a big request for uh, kind of a tuner on a guitar, and they started doing this in the babies, and then the GS Minis. Um, and yet, I think there's people like me that prefer the the Definitely. full EST with the different controls, different yeah. preamp and battery and so forth. So, um, so yeah, but yeah. You know, it's a more expensive preamp, and so it's more on the more expensive, expensive guitar. Yeah, that's fair. So, fair that's enough, cool. right? Yeah. But, you know, the one thing that I think we'll say to, to kind of wrap this up before we listen to each one is, no matter which one of these you end up liking from the sound demo, they all hold their own very well and sound so big that you can really... I think that's what's made these popular, is they're not just a travel guitar that is portable, but sounds like a travel guitar. They're a guitar that's extremely portable, extremely playable, mm-hmm. but sounds like a much bigger guitar than it is. Mm-hmm. So, and each one sounds different, so that's what we're gonna demo for you. Um, going to play through some of our typical demo songs on each one of these so you can hear the differences for yourself. Uh, so check that out, and then uh, after you form your opinions, I'll tell you what I think.
All right, so there you have it. There's a demonstration of the four core GS Mini guitar models that Taylor currently offers for 2021. We should say that there's also some very cool GS Mini bass guitars uh, that you should check out if you are a bass player or if you're wanting to add something like that to your collection. But for the six string variety, these are the four that they offer. You can get, like we said, the Rosewood or the Mahogany with or without electronics. So from the sound demonstration, I have my thoughts, but you've played these plenty of times. What do you think they sound like from one to the other? Um, you know, it, it's weird because with the Koas, like I can hear more of a jump between those two to these two. Um, once I heard the Koa Plus, I really liked it. Um, and it stuck out to me just because it felt richer and warmer and everything. For me personally, if I had kind of a, a budget that I could get any of them. I like the OG, I like the spruce and rosewood, um, and for me, like my spruce and walnut. Um, I don't know, there's something like special about it. I think it's cool without a pickup too, because if you already have an acoustic that you're gonna gig with, yeah, um, and you just need something to fill that, like practice all the time, songwriting, take it with you, I, it's really hard the to The grabbable beat. guitar. The grabbable, um, yeah. I like that one, but what do you think? Well, so I, I own the GS Mini Koa, so I like the sound of Koa. But if you listened to the demos, hopefully you picked up on these. I'll briefly describe what each one really kind of sounds like from a tone standpoint. Your mahogany top guitar is going to have that mid-range we talked about, right? It's a lot of warmth. A lot of times we'll have people in the store that, that say, oh, it's bassy. It's really not bassy. It's just a lot of warm mid-range that people often kind of interpret as bass. Yeah. Uh, but that warmth is really nice and it compresses naturally. So if you do want to record with it or if maybe your dynamics can be all over the place, it really tames the response out of the guitar. And like we normally see with compression, when a, when a sound is compressed, the sustain appears to be longer because the, sa the quiet parts are not as quiet, yeah. the loud parts are not as loud, and so you have this really kind of nice warmth that will just kind of carry it through. So I think that's the, re uh, the reason that that model has been so popular for so long, and I really like that. I do like the sound of the spruce, the responsiveness of it. As I went through the demo, there's certain songs, particularly the flat picking one, that I think just liked that that yeah. top better um, because it's dynamically more responsive than either Koa or Mahogany, um, and it's it's brighter, it's louder. You can kind of back off and then dig in, and you're going to get the guitar responding to you um, as you do that. But when it comes to Koa, and the reason I have a GS Mini Koa is it just looks pretty and I'm shallow. No, uh, maybe. But the reason <laughs> that I like Koa is you have that warmth of mahogany, mm -hmm. which I, on a smaller guitar, I really like that richness. But Koa has more brightness to it than mahogany does. So it's kind of like you have some of that brightness you'd get out of the spruce. You have that rich mid-range. It's not as dynamic, but if you dig into it, it, it compresses and gets snappy, which is yeah. really fun. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I like about the Koa that's available on either of these. Uh, but I mean, I would take any of them. A collection of GS Minis would be cool. That would be um, cool. If, you know, if I just had the money to buy, I'd probably buy that one because of the ES2, if nothing else. Yeah. And the Arrow Case is just killer. Arrow Case was the game changer, I think, for a lot of people that came in wanting this one, but then they see that yeah. if they spend a little bit more, it's a case that... I mean, it's just nice. It's, it's awesome. Well, they've now made that available for full-size guitars. We see that it comes with the 200 Series Plus. Yeah. And I think I'm going to get one for my much more expensive full-size tailors for when I'm just moving about with them. Because yeah. I really like the case that much. I think I told you about this. We had somebody call the other day that just bought a beautiful, I believe it was an 800 Series. Yeah. And they wanted to the just get the arrow case instead of the molded hard shell case and... Well, I mean, we'll do it for you. If, yeah. If that's what you want, you can just get an arrow case. But, so, yeah, the upcharge yeah. with the pickup and the case alone is great. And I think the Koa tends to look even prettier with the uh, the subtle burst yeah. that they're doing on it. It really accentuates some of the, the figuring and flame on the guitar. So Yeah, and even, I mean, all over, yeah. every back and sides all have kind of a burst of their own. It looks really clean, really nice. Very cool guitars. I mean, they're, they're, they're cool guitars. They've been cool guitars. We've known this. This is why it's the third time doing this, but for 2021, yeah, we had not, here's how popular they are. We have not had a chance to do this video prior because we could not keep the GS Mini Koa Plus in stock. 
that says a lot. Yeah. Uh, we can hardly keep these in stock too. So if you've been shopping for a GS Mini of any variety, we have all of them in stock. Um, so go to our website at alamomusic.com. You can check out the specs of all of them. You can uh, also chat live with one of our associates and get photos of the various uh, grain figurings for the GS Minis, whether it's R Rosewood or Koa. The Koa ones tend to be kind of all over the place and they're all very, very cool. So we'll be glad to help you pick out your guitar uh, through those means. Just go to alamomusic.com and we'll put you on the, the path to getting the grabbable GS Mini. Mm -hmm. uh, because we're both fans, and I think there's a lot of fans out there, and we're just going to make more of you. Yep. That's what's going to happen. So mm -hmm. definitely head there. If you like this video, make sure that you hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And drop us a note if you already have a GS Mini or if you've been shopping one, and what you think from the demos is the guitar that appeals most to you. Because you know I say, Cooper, at the end of the day, the very best guitar in the world is... Grabbable. It's a GS Mini, man. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. It's the one that you're playing, and we tend to play ours a lot. So keep playing, stay tuned, and we'll see you <laughs> next time. Mm -hmm.